How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is talk to you all about the recent upgrade to Metasys 11 that we went through. Uh, for us, this was a pretty significant upgrade because we not only went to Metasys 11, we also migrated to a split server system. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that as well, as well as some of the issues that we ran into for this upgrade. Uh, now, first of all, the technicians from Johnson Controls that installed the software and got us back up and running. I know one of you guys are watching this video. Really appreciate all the work that you guys have done. It's very, very helpful, uh, you know, and look forward to working with you quite a bit in the future. But guys, what we did is we had to add an additional machine. The new machine that we added serves now as our SQL database server. It is the fastest machine. It is the one that is configured for optimum performance. So that is the one that is now our server. The existing machine that we already had, we had to upgrade the software that was in it, the operating system. It was running on server 2012, so we had to bring that forward quite a bit. We also then added a virtual machine that we are using as our SCT uh, machine, our SCT backup machine. Now, the ADX, according to Johnson Controls documentation, once you exceed 100 building supervisory devices, the NAEs, the SNEs, and that sort of thing, they want you to migrate to a split type system to maintain optimum performance. That does not mean that your system is going to stop working if you go over that. In fact, there's a lot of systems out there that uh, have more than 100 devices on them. Ours did as well, but based upon the recommendations from Johns Controls and with future plans within the system, we decided to go ahead and migrate to the split type system. I'm going to dive into the documentation just for a few minutes to show you a little bit more about the split system and some of the things that Johnson Controls actually uh, tells you about that. So just bear with me for a moment. You can see here on your screen, let's just go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. Uh, of course, this is uh, some of the information that we have here uh, about your ADX, uh, okay, split ADX, this is what we're going to be looking at here, and you can see from their documentation, the split configuration of the ADX involves in installing ADX functionality on two separate computers with SCT on a third separate computer. The web application computer, uh, the computer with the ADX, ADX software, is installed is known as the web application server. The web application server is where the users browse to see the system. This is typically what you see. This is uh, Metasys as you know it. The database server is the computer that contains the SQL server software database. It is known as the server database. The database server houses historical data such as your trends. Uh, if you were doing any kind of capturing on historical trends and that sort of thing, the database server is where that data is stored. Uh, it cannot be used as a data server, a data repository by more than one web application server. And the SCT computer is the computer that contains your SCT software, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you do your backups, which I strongly recommend that you regularly run SCT on all of your building supervisory devices, it's going to save you a lot of trouble in the future. If you have a an NAE fail, if you have any of your devices fail, uh, having a good backup, a good recent backup, is going to save you a lot of aggravation. Trust me, I know. If you do not have a backup of the database within a system and that device fails, all of your logic, your schedules, your whatever, all goes away and you have to rebuild it from scratch. So I highly recommend you regularly run backups on your SCT. Okay, that is a very critical thing to do. Also, it's a good idea to have more than one copy of your backup. Now, some of the things that we ran into when installing, uh, migrating to the split server system, uh, the 
when we first brought the system back online, there were some issues with a lot of the devices that were going offline. Uh, they would not, they were just all red X'd out. And of course, whenever you do an upgrade like this, there's always going to be some issues. I'm just going to pass as much information along to you guys as I can. And if any of you all are working on migrating to a split type system, then this is some of the things that you may expect as well. Uh, the first thing that you have to do, the first thing that we did, uh, was to get the SQL running on the new machine and get the backup of everything moved over to there before we even began installing the Metasys software on, uh, you know, on the existing machine, bringing it up to 11. Uh, when we began installing SQL, uh, there were a few issues that required some registry hacks. And of course, that was something that um, you know, that was literally something that one of the JCI techs had to Google to get the specifics of what he needed. He was having issues getting SQL installed on the database server, but once he figured out exactly what point to get working to change within the server, he was able to get it working. Now, that's something that you may or may not run into. I wish I had more information on that, but unfortunately, I don't. I was not able to document everything that he was doing, but I'm just putting it out there for you all. Uh, again, it was something that he had to change within the registry to be able to get SQL online and working on this machine. Once he got SQL installed on the machine, he was able to then take a backup copy of the database. You know, you will create a backup using SCT and then import it into the database server. Once that was done, we then got the SCT machine up and running as well. We want to make sure that we can get all of our backups, uh, uh, reliable backups, uh, loaded into both of these before we actually, you know, basically chop the head off of the existing Metasys uh, 10.1 that we were running. Okay, we got the database server up, got the SCT server up, and again, it was a virtual machine. Uh, now, that virtual machine that we have does run Microsoft Server, and you can install, or at least from what we've seen, you can install uh, the not the full version of SQL Server, but the SQL Server Express. It did install onto the SCT machine, and it does run. Uh, I know that if you, any of you guys have priced your SQL database, uh, you know that anywhere that you can save a little bit of money, the, the better off you're going to be. So we were able to install that SQL uh, Express onto that machine, and the SCT software does run on that machine fine. You know, I don't see any issues at the moment. Uh, this is still early on. I've not really had a lot of chance to get involved with uh, everything with 11 yet, but that is just something that I wanted to go ahead and put out there to you. Once we got those two machines up and running, got a good backup of the database, on two separate machines, I made a backup copy on my laptop, and then we also made a backup copy on the new SCT server. Uh, the, we then basically had to, our IT had to pull the server offline. They had to upgrade the system. They upgraded the operating system on that machine, added some additional memory to it, and then brought it back online. Once it was back online, we then installed the Metasys 11 web server application. Of course, there were a few issues uh, back and forth on that, a couple more registry hacks, and we had it up and running. And uh, again, something that I started to mention earlier I want to come back to, and that is the fact that a lot of the devices were offline. They came online for a brief period of time, then they went offline. What had to be done to get those devices back on was a editing of the host file. Uh, each of the devices, for some reason, the files got corrupted, and all of those devices that went offline, the ID as well as the IP address had to be manually entered into the host file to make them work. Now, it was the question was asked whether or not 
uh, we should just blow them out and then just pull them back in manually to where it basically would start from scratch, you know, doing a remove from site. But when he was on the phone, when one of the techs was on the phone from uh, FC or the field service center, uh, they did not recommend doing that. You know, there was a lady there that was very helpful in getting this done, and she said that basically don't do that. You're better off editing the host file to get those back working. As soon as the correct information was entered into that host file, as soon as the save button was hit in the notepad where it was edited, that device would pop back on with the system with no problem whatsoever. We got all those back online, and then we continued working through some of the additional bugs uh, within the system. Now, some of the additional issues that we ran into was the fact that uh, some schedule objects within one particular building, apparently there's some type of corruption that was in them, and we ended up having to, or well, the JCI techs ended up just rebuilding each of those schedule objects. They would not pull into MUI. Uh, I could see them in SCT. We could edit them in SCT, but they would not populate in MUI for whatever reason. I do not know the specifics about it. You could not even see them in MUI. Uh, you would pull them over and, you know, go even under the network tree, pull them over, and they just were not functioning right. It was very clear they were not functioning right. We then pulled them, or they rebuilt the schedule from scratch. They popped right into MUI, no problems whatsoever, Function. They'd done the thing that they should do. Another issue that we had was with the user accounts. Uh, that is something I'm still working on putting back together for a few folks. But the user accounts, for whatever reason, there are some users within the system that it completely locked them out of their accounts. Do not know why, but it, it did. They just It just completely blew them out. Uh, we're having to go back in and basically rebuild those user accounts for those folks. Uh, it's not a major deal, but it is something that you want to be aware of. Again, the guys, this is something, some information that I'm trying to put out to you all, uh, just so you know some of the things that can happen if you are doing this big of an upgrade at once. It took us a few days to get everything done. Uh, again, the guys from JCI, they did a great job. I really appreciate all the work that they did, and we would not have been able to get the system online if they did not do the things that they did. But guys, this is, again, just some information. If you are considering doing an upgrade to Metasys 11, if you are looking at migrating to a split server system, these are some potential things that you can encounter. So you need to try to plan for that as you move forward. Guys, it's just a video that I wanted to do. Let me know what version of Metasys you are currently running down in the description. Uh, you know, leave me a comment. Just let me know what it is. Let me know if you are having any kind of issues. If you're currently running Metasys 11, if you had seen any of these issues when you upgraded, I'd like to know. Uh, but guys, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Be sure to subscribe. Check out the links down in the description and we will see you next time.